Today we're gonna make a two-player pinball game. My initial concept was to pick up a popular single-player game and give it a new meaning by dissoluting its solitary purpose and turn it into interaction with another human being. So let's have fun together! This project is sponsored by Inventables and is part of the Maker Challenge that they release each month. This month's theme is games, so I challenged myself to create this two-player pinball machine to inspire you to make your own game and enter the challenge. You don't even need to have a 3D carving machine to win some of the prizes, you can simply open their free software called Easel and start exploring. Then you just submit the project you create to apply for the challenge. I have all the links in the description, so make sure to check those out. Now let's get started on the build. I will be using colored MDF, acrylics and aluminum from Inventables website, as well as some plywood. You can also find the links to all the materials and carving bits utilizing this project down below. There are a few ways you can clamp your material to the x carve base, and for most of the cuts I use double-sided tape. It's great because you can cut all the way through and the parts will be kept in place, but there is some cleaning to do later on since the sawdust becomes sticky once the carving bit passes the tape. Not a big deal though. The bit used to carve all the wooden parts was the 1 8 2 flute straight bit. I organized the shapes by color in the software and kept changing the material once each cut round was done. In a couple days this project will be out on Inventables website and I'll post a link below so you can open it and see all the drawings using the easel software. I only made the tops of the pieces colored and used plywood for the bottom layers of each pinball element. Here I used some crazy looking golden acrylic and changed for a one flute spiral upcut bit. For acrylics and aluminum you really should use an upcut bit so the chips get cleared out easily and this prevents any melting and gumming in the cutting path. I drew all the shapes in Adobe Illustrator and then imported them to Easel, but you can do almost all the shapes just using Easel itself. So I will give you some examples right away. You can create rectangles with specific sizes and round their corners to the preferred radius using the shape options. If you want to bond shapes and turn them into a single one, you can just select the multiple shapes and right click on your mouth over them and select combine. So now you have a single object. You can put a few shapes together to create a visual reference and trace with the pen tool exactly what you want. You can distort angles, make curves out of points in the corners. Uh, there are many many features to help you out create whatever you might need and Eventables have a bunch of videos in their YouTube channel going through all the details. They are very well explained and I actually watched a few that really helped me out to understand the easel software. Here you can see some bottom layers being cut out of plywood. I wanted to make two tunnels out of translucent colored acrylic and did my best to fit all the parts that will be layered up together in one single sheet as you can see here in the simulator. Just so that you know, for carving you should always use cast acrylic. If you use extruded acrylic it won't really work and you will get a huge mess with melted parts, a completely gummed carving bit and horrible cutting edges. That will happen even if you're only making a groove with the router and might even happen at the table saw. I learned that quite a few years ago. So make sure you get it correct from your supplier or from Inventables online store. Cast acrylic. While the tunnels were being cut, I was trying out some angles for the board ramps and I ended up choosing an 8 degree angle. So I set up my plant saw to that angle and cut one edge on each half. Then I made a frame all around and also set up the miter saw to weight the grease to cut the middle joint for the frame. I secured everything with clamps and pre-drilled and countersink so that the heads of the screws will be flush to the baseboard. Carlos from Cactus Workshop offered to make the plunger mechanisms when I told him I was going to make a two-player pinball game. And we turned this opportunity into a collaboration, so make sure to check out his video on how he handmade these super cool plungers. 
This came all the way from Spain and he also got me a few 22mm steel balls from a big ball bearing. So I needed to make something to hold the plungers in place. I unscrewed the side piece to make a perpendicular hole in the drill press and reattached it. Then I kept attaching the parts, keeping everything as aligned as possible until I got both plungers working properly. I wanted to try the inlay app, so I created some basic cactus drawings to inlay in each ramp. Here you can choose the bit size and the tolerance, that means if you want the pocket and filler shape to be more or less tight, and I recommend you doing some testing before going to the actual workpiece. The app generates the two parts based on the chosen options, and now you just need to place each one on different pages to carve on the different materials you'll be using. Don't forget to set up the correct cut height that should be the same of your inlay material and you can press simulate to see how much time it is taking and also see the movements that the bit is going to make. So while the positive parts were cutting, I separated the boards from the frames and clamped each half of the game board in the X-carve table. I also draw a rectangle with a pencil and set the zero point in the correct place for each cactus. Then I could spend some time sanding and gluing the colored tops to the plywood bottoms. I learned this gluing technique from David Picciuto that consists on applying both wood glue and CA glue so that when you press the parts together they will bond immediately because of the CA glue so it functions as a clamping method while the wood glue dries and makes the connection strong. I kept assembling obstacles and I recommend you gluing everything you can to make them stronger for the ball bumps. Once the pockets were carved, I inserted the colored cactus and sanded the whole surface flat. Now let's work on the little doors obstacle. First I marked the center points to be drilled in each door on both sides and drilled halfway using a tiny drill bit and flipped them over to drill the other half. Now we need some steel wire to insert the little doors, making sure they spring very freely. It's better to make a little recess on one of the door frames to accommodate the wire and quickly stick it in place with a drop of CA glue. Then we can glue the frames together. I recommend you making this frame a bit thicker and wider because mine ended up a bit fragile. Then I just kept assembling more obstacles and Joanna helped out cleaning the gummy edges from the acrylic tunnel pieces. I glued all the layers together using CA glue again and tried to be careful because the acrylic bonds immediately once it falls together, so take your time positioning everything as aligned as you can before dropping the next layer. Something else I learned about acrylics is that things might go really wrong if you try to clean their edges with alcohol. The edges might get little cracks or a horrible tear out look. Use nail acetone instead and you will keep everything nice and sharp. At this point there were still missing a few more pieces so I took care of that and finally started assembling the ramps. I used pocket holes that work really well since the joint was at an angle. I also attached the sides of the frame with two pocket holes that will be covered by the plunger corridor. I cut some angled pieces to reinforce and support the ramps underneath and those were fairly easy to cut using the plunge saw. I 
I used more pocket holes to attach the angled pieces and I could finally start placing all the game content in the ramps. I drilled the recess for the bolt head because I will later put some golden caps on the flippers. Then I drilled a 5mm hole to receive the bolt. I aligned the flippers position horizontally to a pencil line I traced 8cm from the bottom of the frame and used a block of wood with a hole in it made the drill press to help me guiding the driller perpendicular to the surface. With the flippers in place, I distributed the rest of the pieces on the ramps, tracing their outlines and drilling holes for screws to come from underside. With the tips of the screws protruding just a tiny bit, I hammered the pieces to create some points to be able to pre-drill in the exact place. Then I could drive the screws completely. I repeated that procedure for all the obstacles, but for the tunnels I did use 3M bolts instead because I was afraid that the acrylic might crack when driving regular screws. So I drilled 2.75mm holes and created threads for the 3mm bolts. Now to move the flippers, I took the idea from a video that I will put in the description that has detailed steps on how to make them moving but this is not complicated. You just have a long piece of wood that will serve as a button that is trapped but still free enough to slide in and out. It bumps against another piece that functions as the reverse of the flipper that also bumps against a stop block. This will all work with rubber bands and you'll be able to see them in action in the end of the video. Now I want to try out cutting aluminum and for that I choose an upcut spiral bit that works beautifully for this purpose. Of course you won't be able to go as fast as cutting wood or acrylics, but it is totally possible in the X-carve. This was quite thin, but by making more passes you could cut much thicker material if necessary. I kept applying elements in the board game in the meantime. The edges came out perfect, although all you can see here is the gummy shavings because of the tape, but they were really crisp and straight. I glued three blades to each triangle using CA glue, but don't do that. Just use epoxy instead since the ball will snap those off after a bit of use. I finally made two side covers to make the whole machine look a bit better and chiseled some pockets for the buttons before attaching them in place. I broke the sharp edges with sandpaper all around and applied a few rubber bands in the bumper elements as well as in the flippers to absorb a bit of the shocks and also make them more bouncy. Now you can see the golden caps on the flippers. The only thing left to do now is to have a lot of fun playing it. This project took me more time than expected and I hope you can make yours in a shorter amount of time since you can see the building process here and I provide you the templates for all the pieces I made. You can go wild and make crazier elements with tracks and spirals and loops and even install electronic sensors and lights, sounds or counting points. Before I call my friends to play, I'll just show you how the flippers mechanism is working. I have a bunch of rubber bands here and you can use as many as you want to get different levels of spring pressure. Sometimes one cannot be enough to bring the button out once pressed, so you just keep adding more until it works. The cross elements can also be used as extra ball features. I also added an extremely simple device for counting the points and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this one and thank you so much for watching. Also go check out Cactus Workshop videos and a huge thanks to Inventables for supporting my work. I'll catch you guys later and go have fun! Sí, 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 sí,
mas ficou uma bola. Olha, eu acho que é uma bola, não é? Ah, mas sim, isso não 